Hey guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris, and if you're here, you most likely just got done watching Ma. And if you have not, please click away, guys. This will be completely spoiler-filled. I will be going into the ending of the movie, talking about the little kills and twists and turns that this film decides to take. If you want my spoiler-free review so the movie won't be ruined for you, I'll link it in the description or card right above me. But now that you have been warned, let's go ahead and dive into the movie Ma. So as a quick little story recap, Ma is basically told through the eyes of Maggie. She is a new girl in town after her father has abandoned her and her mother, leaving the mother to move back to her hometown where Maggie is the new kid. From here, she befriends a couple of the popular kids in school. And with this group of friends, you have your stereotypical characters that need to be involved in a horror film. You have the popular girl, Haley, who's pretty slutty. You have the jock with a typical cool guy named Chaz. The sweet boy that becomes the love interest for Maggie, Andy. And Daryl, the token black kid that needs to be included because, hey, it's a horror movie and you need at least one. And after becoming chums, they do what all teenagers want to do, and that is party and drink. Unfortunately, they are not old enough, in comes in Sue Ann, or as we'll later know her to be, Ma. The kids decide to ask her if she'd be willing to purchase them beer so that they could go on and party. Sue Ann at first rejects the offer, says no thank you, until witnessing the van that they are driving. The name on the van is Security Hawking, which sparks a flashback for her of her high school crush, Ben Hawking, who happens to be the son of Andy in this movie. It's from here where she quickly decides, you know what, I am gonna help these kids and I'm gonna get creepily involved in in their lives. The reason Ma decides to target and mess with these kids is because she is acting out revenge in retaliation for what was done to her in her high school times. It just so happened coincidentally in this small town that all the kids that are currently friends, their parents went to high school with Ma and they pulled a horrible prank on her that scarred her for life. This prank in particular is taking the shy awkward girl Ma and making her believe that the high school hottie at that time, Ben Hawking, who is the father of Andy in this movie actually had a little crush on her and was going to have a sexual relationship with her. Telling Teenage Ma if that they met in the gender's closet in the dark, he'd be willing to let her go down on him. As it turned out though, it was not Ben at all, but instead one of the dorky nerdy kids in the school who of course would say yes to getting a BJ from a random girl. To make it worse, the entire classroom was waiting for her to come out of the closet when she was done to humiliate her. This really was a messed up thing that they put into the movie but completely makes sense why she has all this pain and anger towards all these kids involved in the prank because every single one of these parents edged her on and made her believe that she was becoming popular by performing this little sexual act in the janitor's closet. This all really snowballed when she encountered the kids in that parking lot and started devising a plan but even in the movie itself we get to see the scars that that prank left her behind because even if she never encountered the kids in the parking lot she herself was really doing some bad things to her own daughter. In the film we're told that mom eventually did get married, had a husband, but it didn't seem to work out. Hell, I'm even thinking she killed the man. But the sickening part is that she's literally keeping her daughter hostage in the house, making her believe that she is sick by purposely injecting her with stuff she is stealing from the vet clinic she is working only to make her daughter feel sick, feel horrible. This is actually a defense mechanism that Ma is using because when you're scarred that way in high school and led to believe that everyone is out to get you and only wants to make fun of you, psychologically when she has someone she loves and is afraid that one day that thing is gonna grow up and leave her, the separation anxiety forces her to make sure that person will never leave her life, which is why she's making her own daughter sick. So no, her daughter is never really sick in the movie. It's just something that Ma has done because of the scars left behind through that high school prank. Jumping into some of the kills in this movie, by far the one that made me cringe the most is when Ma took the dog's blood and started injecting that blood into Ben, the guy who started the whole prank in the first place. The father of Andy to be exact. To have that done was pretty creative and just horrifying to watch that against your own will dog's blood is being poured into you. I, I don't even know if you could survive that way. Well apparently you can because he did die. And I'm sorry if you were hoping to see titties in this movie because they're not there but you got to see Luke Evans' schlong so. Other than that though, the trailers, man, the trailers, this movie really could have been something special, but they spoiled so much in the trailers, they give away the high school connection that Ma is connected to these kids' parents. And really the ending shot, this was all over every single trailer, which is basically the height of the movie. Her taking this picture, knowing that even if she does not survive through the night, she is leaving scars in the same way those kids left her scars by messing with her children. She's kind of like a living Freddy Krueger, if you ask me. Each one of them getting their own punishment 
Haley, the little slutty girl who doesn't know how to close her mouth, gets her mouth sewed in. The jock with his perfect, I'm amazing skin gets ironed right on his stomach. Andy getting stabbed, but by far the one who got it the easiest was Daryl, who all he got was white paint on his face. I was expecting them to cut to show maybe that's some sort of acidic paint or some really powerful glue. But no, I'm, I'm sure this kid's gonna be fine after a little hot soapy bath. But to end it all off, I think there is definitely a possibility for a sequel to happen here because rule number one in a horror movie, if you don't see the body die, that means it's not dead. Because by the end of the movie, the kids do escape that basement. All of them seem to turn out alive. The only one I'm probably worried for is Andy because he did get stabbed. But the house goes up in flames and Ma decides to cozy up to her crush that she never got over, even though he's dead now, and lays in the bed as the house goes up in flames. Now they don't show us her burning up. Firefighters could have arrived and put out the fire and put Ma in handcuffs, or hell, she could have escaped somehow through a window. So I think the possibility of Ma still being out there is a real thing. Whether she decides to go back for these high school kids, or maybe it's just a story of her in prison and how she decides to take care of some people in there. Honestly, it's just how amazing Octavia Spencer played the character of Ma that would make me want to go back and see another movie because she was fantastic with the character and I was completely ready to be against it because she just did not seem like the menacing type. But man, I would not like to party with her. She can drink alone for all I care. But anyways, guys, what did you guys think about the ending for Ma? Were you happy with it? Were you expecting a little more? I know the film was kind of slow until the end, but I think a lot of the character development in here was well worth it. I just wish the trailers did not spoil everything. Could have had me enjoying the film a lot more, but I did basically see everything coming. Still fun to watch though. Anything and everything, go ahead and leave your thoughts down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.